Hi, I'm Torm Janssen from thoughtsonjava.org with a new Hibernate tip. This time I will show you how to map the result of a native query to managed entities. You have two options to map the result of a native query that returns all columns mapped by an entity. In the best case, Hibernate already knows all the required information and you can use the implicit mapping. If that's not the case, you can use an SQL result set mapping annotation to define your own mapping. Let's have a look at the implicit mapping first. You don't need to provide any additional mapping information if your query result uses the same column names as your entity mapping. In this case, you just have to provide the entity class as the second parameter to the create native query method. You can see an example of it here on the slide. Here you can see the same query as I showed you on the slide. The book entity maps all columns of the book table and this query simply selects a record with all columns from it. Hibernate already has all information it needs to map the result of this query to a book entity. You just need to tell it to apply this mapping. I do that by providing the book class as the second parameter to the create native query method. Let's run this test and see what happens. You can see here that the implicit mapping had no effect on the native query. Hibernate performed the query as I defined it in the test case and applied the mapping afterwards. The implicit mapping approach is easy to use and most often the best solution. But sometimes the column names of your query result don't match your mapping definition. In these cases, you can use an SQL result set mapping annotation to define a custom mapping. You can see an example of such a mapping here on the slide. The mapping consists of a name and an entity result annotation. I will explain this annotation in more detail in the IDE. When you've defined your mapping, you can provide its name as the second parameter to the create native query method to tell Hibernate how to map the query result. Okay, let's get into the IDE and have a more detailed look at the mapping definition. You can see an SQL result set mapping here. It has the name book mapping and tells Hibernate how to map a query result to a book entity. The entity result mapping requires you to define a field result mapping for each entity attribute. This is quite simple. You just have to provide the name of the entity attribute and the name of the column. Let's use this mapping with a native query. You already know this code from the previous example. It selects all columns from the book table for the record with ID 1 and tells Hibernate to map it to a book entity. But this time I use an SQL result set mapping and provide its name as the second parameter to the create native query method. As you can see, the test case was successful. And as in the previous example, the mapping had no effect on the query. Hibernate performed the native query as I defined in the test case and used the SQL result set mapping afterwards to map the query result to a managed entity. Okay, that's it for today. If you liked this video, please subscribe below. You should also join the free Thoughts on Java library to download this and other Hibernate tips as a PDF. You also get access to a lot of free member-only content like an ebook about Java 8 support in Hibernate, lots of cheat sheets and a video course. I'll add the link to it to the video description below. See you next week for a new Hibernate tip video.